Hey guys, welcome to Digital Sweeney channel on YouTube and please do subscribe to this channel so you're informed of any upcoming videos that uh, hopefully you'll like. Now, in this uh, video, I am going to talk about using TensorFlow Lite for real-time detection of facial uh, emotion, age, and gender. Well, if you have watched the last video, we have done exactly the same, but using the Kerastrain model, like our H5 files. Right. So for those of you who did not watch the last few videos, we started off by using OpenCV to detect the face. And then we trained a model in a different video. We trained a model to detect facial emotions using images as tiny as 48 by 48 pixels. And then we put together models for our uh, training for uh, detecting age and gender using images of size 200 by 200 pixels. In the last video, we put everything together. So we detect the face and then the emotion and age and gender. Uh, all of these using our TensorFlow trained or Keras trained uh, models in the form of in the format of H5. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to save those H5 files into TensorFlow Lite and then use those to do exactly the same task. Why? Now, once we verify that these TensorFlow Lite files are working on Windows, in the next video, let's take exactly the same, you know, those files onto a Raspberry Pi and then uh, deploy that onto our Raspberry Pi. In our case, we're calling this the Edge device, but it, the, the, the process would be very similar, right? If you want to deploy that onto your Android or any other embedded device, then you know that these models are working. So that's the goal right now, to make sure we can create these TensorFlow Lite files and then use them uh, to get a similar accuracy or you know, similar functionality uh, you know, on a Windows system. So let's jump in. So uh, this is the file uh, or the Python file from the last tutorial where we imported our models. You see here, H5 models. And the XML is for detecting the face using OpenCV. And then for each of these detected faces, yeah, we are detecting the faces using the face classifier yeah, from uh, the, this XML file. For each of these faces, within each of these faces, go ahead and crop the face first of all, or look at only the region within within the face region, and then apply my emotion model and make a prediction and put the text onto the image so we know what the prediction is. We did the same for gender. We did the model that predict for gender, and we also placed that on, on the image. And then we did pretty much the same here. Now the goal right now is to change these model.predict to uh, something else that uh, reflects our TensorFlow Lite. So first of all, let's start by saving the TensorFlow Lite model. So how do you do that? I showed this, uh, you know, a couple of, a few videos ago. It's very simple, a couple of lines, that's it. So uh, first of all, let's import TensorFlow. I don't think we need Keras, but let's import these three right there. And we are going to load the models first, yeah? So using this, we are going to load the emotion model, the age and gender models. So let's go ahead and load this. So far, TensorFlow Lite, is not in the picture until now. We'll get there. So now let's define our converter. In fact, you can call this uh, you can call this emotion converter. But uh, uh, I'm just calling this converter, which is in TensorFlow. You have light. Within light, you have TF light converter, and from Keras model, right? So from Keras model, which model? The emotion model. So this is my converter. So let's go ahead and run that, and then. We are assigning our uh, converter dot convert to a TF Lite model because this would be our TF Lite model, and then we are going to save that TF Lite model. Now, between these steps, you can include a optimization step, and there are a couple of optimizations. Again, I refer you to the documentation. Go ahead and look at the TensorFlow Lite documentation to see how the optimization is performed. If you enable this optimization, the file sizes would be even smaller compared to without optimization. Now, uh, I did save it with and without optimization, although I'm not going to show you with optimization here because on Windows, if you do this optimization, the inference would be painfully slow. This, this can crash my webcam. 
you can try that yourself but the uh, inference on these type of uh, scenarios would be very slow and we are trying to infer three models right there so let's not worry about uh, using optimized tf uh, uh, you know tf light for this video but we are definitely going to use that in our next video when we deploy that onto the edge devices because that's where they are super fast okay or at least they can be uh, used uh, on on these devices uh, so i saved with and without these i did save these models if i can show you yeah there you go no optimization first of all the age model is 260 let me put it here the age model after 50 epochs it's a size of 267,000 almost 268,000 uh, uh, kilobytes or 268 megabytes right there without optimization it came down to 89 megabytes already a hu humongous improvement and with optimization it is 22 megabytes so uh, obviously, with these optimizations and converting them into TensorFlow Lite, we are sacrificing something. Otherwise, how would we go from 267, 268 to 89 megabytes? So we are converting. We are compromising a bit, but hopefully not, uh, not significantly enough to affect our final predictions. And uh, my emotion model, again, uh, original model, 29 megabytes. The one without optimization, 9. The one with optimization, 2 megabytes very small and light, right? This is the whole point of TensorFlow Lite, to make it light enough that it is portable and hopefully the inference is fast enough so uh, we can infer right on the device rather than uploading our images to a server and then making the predictions and then bringing it down. And uh, the gender model, 15 megabytes right there uh, and uh, without optimization and with optimization, uh, 3.8 megabytes and the original file is 46 megabytes. Just to give you a good idea of what the size of these models we're talking about. Okay, now let's jump back in. And uh, this is how we converted our models. That's it from, uh, from Keras, like H5 to TensorFlow Lite. Okay, I hope no questions there because the process is very, very simple. Yeah, we are converting that. You have a TensorFlow Lite model and then we are writing it to a file. That's it. Once you have this, now comes uh, pretty much the same code as before, right? I mean, again, loading the models and then uh, detecting the face and applying this. We'll do exactly the same, except as you probably know, if, uh, this is not as simple as model.predict. You have to create a tensor and then you have to update the tensor and so on. So we'll do that right here. So let's uh, delete everything, all the variables and all the variables. And now let's look at the code. So we are importing these. In fact, uh, I, I commented out this part. I'll share the code. That's why I have this code here, but I commented this part. This is basically the part from before, this part. I just copied in case you just want one file. I commented this uh, because we covered this in the previous tutorial. So some of these uh, libraries are hanging from there. <laughs> so let's run these and let's import the face classifier. We need the face classifier. This is the XML file that you can get from OpenCV web page. And I provided the links in the video when we talked about this uh, face classifier. Look at three, four videos ago, that's appropriate and you'll find these links. I'll try to remember to add these links down here so you don't have to hunt for the uh, hunt for them okay so once you have the face classifier now let's predict using tensorflow light so okay now we have a classifier to detect the face next part we need to detect emotions age and gender let's tackle them one by one starting with emotion interpreter how do you interpret how do you predict using tensorflow light you define an interpreter interpreter is basically your model yeah so my model path is right there and this is my interpreter. So let's go ahead and define my uh, emotion interpreter and then uh, allocate the tensors right there, okay? And then let's do exactly the same for age and age interpreter, gender and the tensor right there. Now let's move down to the next step, which is uh, getting the inputs and outputs. So emotion input details. Once you have the interpreter uh, defined, you can just do get underscore input details to get the, de obviously as the name suggests, the input details for this emotion. Let's so run that and let's open this emotion input details so you know exactly what we are talking about. This is a dictionary and when you open the dictionary, you can see that my input shape is one by 48 by 48 by one. 
Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to use later on uh, when, when I need to define the shape. Okay, so the input details, let's similarly define the output details so it knows what the input and output details are. Same thing with my age, input and output details. Same thing with my gender model, input and output details. Now let's define the input shape. Input shape, we just saw that. Input shape is basically your input details and uh, with the key of shape in the dictionary, right? So that's what your emotion input shape is, and then your age, and then your gender. So now we know the input shapes. Next step, let's define the class labels. Why? We saw this in the last video. Our output from this model is going to be a value of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. We need to convert that into angry, disgust, fear, or one of these so we can print it on the image. That's why I'm defining it there. Same thing with my gender labels right there. Age is just this number, so we don't have to define any, any list right here. Okay, this part, again, should be very familiar to you. We start by capturing the video, my primary video camera. And then what does cap.read provide you? Two things. What we care about is this frame, which is our image, right? As a, as a function of time. So you get this image and convert that image into gray, right? Convert your frame into grayscale because the detect multiscale expects a grayscale image. And what is detect multiscale? Under face classifier, it detects your faces at multiple scales, whether you're close or farther away, whether the face is tiny or big, that's what it's supposed to do. So then you get the faces. Up to this point, we have done it in the last video. Even this point, we have done it, right? For each of the faces detected here, because this can be multiple faces, not just one. For each of those, draw a rectangle in blue, and then extract the smaller region from my gray region right there. Yeah, because I don't, if my image is this entire thing, my face is right here. My goal is to detect the emotion in the face. So crop the face part. That's exactly what we are doing right there. Resize it to 48 by 48 because that's what the size of the input is. We saw that, right? The input shape is 148, 48, 1. So that's what we have here. And then we need to divide by 255 because we are scaling them. We did this in our original training, so we have to do that here. And uh, convert this image to array and expand the dimensions, getting getting everything ready for my uh, interpretation or model.predict. Here comes the uh, actual part, again, of prediction. So first of all, you set the tensor. What is it? This is my ROI. So now it knows the dimensions of my ROI, right? What is the ROI going in? And then dot invoke is what, think of this as model.predict. If you're coming from Keras, then uh, uh, this, this interpreter dot invoke is basically your model.predict. So this gives you basically the output. And then your predictions are emotion output details. And uh, uh, you're, uh, you're just assigning that to your predictions right there. Okay. Uh, and uh, once you get your prediction, Again, like I mentioned, the prediction is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. You need to convert that into a label. So we are just looking at our class labels and the position of that uh, uh, emotion right there. And then at this location, we are going to print that emotion. At the x, y means top left corner. We are going to predict this. We are going to repeat exactly the same for our gender right there. So our image is right there. Instead of 48 by 48, we are converting that into a 200 by 200 array and then reshaping it and uh, uh, you know uh, getting it into the right uh, right format and interpreter invoke and then get the predictions once you get the prediction we are going to uh, uh, we are going to convert that into a classification because the prediction here is uh, a continuous variable number between 0 to 1 it can be 0 0.2 0 0.3 whatever it is we set a threshold at 0.5 and say anything below that is 0 anything above that is 1 so we are binarizing it and then we are just looking at our gender label 0 is male I think yeah 0 is male 1 is female and we are printing that value at uh, somewhere at the bottom of the screen we are putting the text at the bottom of the screen. Very similar to age. So age, we are doing exactly the same. We are predicting it. We are rounding the out output. 
so instead of printing 32 point whatever we are printing 32 right we are rounding it and then we are printing it at the bottom right side of the screen that's what x plus h and y plus h basically means yeah and there you go it's like i said this is exactly similar to the last video except the way we interpret with our TensorFlow light is different. It's not just model.predict. All the other steps are same. You see, getting the data ready to the right shape, and then once you get the result, uh, you know, formatting it, uh, it's all the same as what we have done in the last video. It's just that it's not model.predict. You just have to do a couple other uh, extra steps. And these steps are pretty similar every time. So you should be able to do that. Now let's go ahead and run this. And for that, let me go ahead and stop this video, turn my video, uh, my video uh, webcam off uh, because this needs the access, uh, access to this webcam. So let, let me continue in it just a second. Okay, I'm here and let us uh, run everything from here down. So it will fire up the camera in a second. Okay, there you go. There is the camera and there is this happy and uh, the age is ridiculous i think uh, let me stop and see what it uh, kind of stops at yeah about 30 i'm i'm plus add add extra 15 or 16 to that okay so the age uh, again the accuracy is not that great and depending upon my angle it can it can uh, lean towards a male or a female in fact uh, uh, yeah, it's it's continuously predicting uh, right there and happy and angry. Uh, it's a fun thing if you if you're trying to be an actor. This can be a great way of actually <laughs> uh, practicing whether your uh, you know your emotions. But as you can see, this is uh, I'm using TensorFlow Lite, and to me this this uh, uh, you know uh, feels same speed or if not uh, faster. And I should say this one is using not the optimized. Opti not the optimized version, just the regular version right there. Okay, so uh, in the next video, let's actually deploy this onto a Raspberry Pi and uh, see how it works there because uh, getting things ready on Raspberry Pi is a pain if you are used to Windows. There is a lot of dependency. If you have never done it, uh, you need to install OpenCV, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, you need to, you need to, uh, uh, install. I, I don't think you need full TensorFlow, but you need to install this uh, TensorFlow Lite version of the interpreter. So I'll try to capture those steps as part of uh, as part of uh, my uh, video on Raspberry Pi. I just got this from my son, so I don't think it has the recorders or anything. So it takes a little bit of preparation from my side, but I'll do that so you guys can uh, benefit from these uh, from these uh, tutorials. Thank you, guys. Let's meet in the next video.